Hey everybody, it's time for another constructed video. I noticed recently that I've been playing a lot of slow decks like mid range and control, so today is about punching people in the face. This is an Obzon aggro deck based around the creature type Knight. We, the advantage of playing Knights is that we can play four unclaimed territory, which makes our mana much better than a normal three color aggro deck would be, and so we get access to really powerful gold cards like Conclave Cavalier and just get to play the best knights across these three colors, which is sweet. Deck is pretty straightforward. We are playing a lot of creatures with the knight creature type and then also a Danto Vanguard because this card is just really good and we needed some more early plays. We are a little more resilient than the average aggro deck. Midnight Reaper, History of Benalia play well against removal. Same with Conclave Cavalier. And then a Johnny can take over games or grind in a long one. And Vona is just a very good top end card that can deal with anything. In the sideboard, this is really the reason why I think this deck might actually be good, is this sideboard is fantastic. We have good anti-control cards in Duress and Ajani. I basically always end up playing four Duress in every deck I play. And uh, against the red based control decks, we have Midnight Reaper to make our threats good against removal. But most importantly, we have one of the best cards I've found against Black Green. A lot of people are playing BG, and Tokatli Honor Guard is amazing against that deck. If you just look at their deck list, basically every creature they're playing has an Enters the Battlefield ability, and a lot of their removal leans on things like that, whether it be Plague Crafter or Ravenous Chupacabra or whatever. It is very difficult for them to beat this card if you back it up with pressure and other things that they want to be dealing with. Finally, to round it out, for Moment of Craving, our Mono Red matchup isn't that bad. We have four Knight of Autumn and our creatures block very well, but the deck is still quite good, and so I wanted to show it its due respect and have the Moment of Cravings. I actually recorded this deck tech already and hopped into a match, but I quickly realized that I had built the deck a little wrong. I had some weaker cards, and I, I had over sideboarded for certain matchups, but the opponent scooped after game one, so I figured it was a good time to take a mulligan and just show you guys the updated deck list. All right, we'll be right back with the games. All right, getting right into it against Microwave. This deck is actually really neat. I've played Black White Knight stuff before. Uh, this hand is quite good, but uh, it never, it was always lacking something, and the addition of Conclave, Cavalier, and Knight of Autumn just gives us access to big creatures that really tussle well with the opponent in a way that we didn't have before. Also, importantly, the meta, meta has settled a little bit. I played against this deck, or something like it, several times at the SCG Open, and as Black Green, I was able to just kind of grind it up. It didn't really have a chance. All their creatures were individually weaker than mine. But uh, the fact that we have Tokatli Honor Guard, which week one people did not, means that this deck is pretty good now. Opponent leading on Island. This is not an incredible hand against Island. Hopefully they follow up with a red land. Yeah, much happier to see that. Okay, so this is the Drake's deck, which is, I don't know, probably a little worse for us than, uh, than a blue-red control deck, since they can just race us. But we've got an answer to at least one Drake, and if we can stick Vona, that should probably be game over. Okay, that's rough. I'm just going to go ahead and stick this. If they want to play defensively, we're not going to be able to attack in well anyway, so might as well try to go wide. Hopefully they are late on threats. The real problem with trying to beat this deck is when you they play Crackling Drakes, because you remove them and they just have more. That's really hard to keep up with. Okay, chart of course, that's fine. Pitching an Arclight Phoenix. Hopefully they don't have two 1-drops here. That would be really tough for us to keep up with. Uh-oh. Oh god. They kept on top. It's almost certainly a shock. Yep. Wow. Opponent's draw is just absolutely fantastic. Like, this could not have gone better for them. Okay. Let's play our land. Go ahead, go to combat, attack. See, we're definitely playing a creature and tribunaling this Enigma Drake. Hmm. 
We could play either one, so I'm going to go ahead and get the Midnight Reaper down. We still might just die to this, but we are presenting quite a lot of power ourselves, so... Opponent needs something good here to not just get beaten up. That said, as I said, their opening has just been fantastic. Hard selection into pitching the perfect card, their best threat, or at least their most efficient, and then triple spell to reanimate this as early as possible. Just really hard to keep up with a curve like that. Okay. We get to draw a card, but losing a life is not trivial here. Going down to 12 against this 3 power flyer is rough. Okay, so what do we do here? I think we're definitely going to go to combat and attack with everyone. One doesn't have to block, no. Hmm. So the question is... Do we play Knight of Grace and just play a tap land, which is almost certainly not good enough? I think we're just going to die to this. Or do we go down to 7 to play Vona? If Vona sticks, Vona's going to win the game for us, so I'm going to gamble a little bit. I think just playing out a bunch of 2-2s is not going to be good enough. And notably, this does not change the clock against Arclight Phoenix. Uh, it was going to kill us in 3 hits anyway, and it still takes 3 hits from the Phoenix. They could back it up with a shock, but they've already played two, so I don't think playing around an additional shock is worth it. Okay, opponent's creatures have trample, that doesn't affect anything at all. Opponent's just cantripping here. They really want these types of cards to be generating value, whether they have like a drake or of either type, or uh, if they were working on getting back a phoenix. But they really don't. Like they're only the only way this actually does anything is if they can loot away. Like if they play a shard of course and loot away a phoenix, it'll check all those spells they've already cast. But when they're down to one mana, I'm actually feeling okay about this. They would need something really good to do with one mana. Because if they don't, we're just gonna hit them with our big creatures, gain some life, threaten to exile something if that actually matters. Probably not going to do that, though. Can't really afford to lose seven. Suspense is killing me, opponent. Come on. Show me what you got. Okay, they had an untapped land. I, for some reason, I thought they'd already played their land, but... Now they have to block one of our creatures. Which isn't super relevant. They were probably fine with throwing away their Electromancer anyway. Wow, pitching a shock, okay. They're really desperate to dig for something here. Hmm. I think they might be overvaluing Vona. Like, I don't know. I think they could have just hit me for three, down to four, taken eight down to two, and then, like, been fine. Oh, well that is just an excellent draw. So let's go ahead and go to combat. All our creatures have Vigilance, which is nice. Means this guy isn't going to attack in. Alright, opponent, what do you got? Like a blink of an eye? That would be pretty good. Nope, just cycling. Wow, pitching an Enigma Drake. Yeah, I'm not super sold on the way opponent has played this game. But uh, I will take it, since I think it means we are very likely to win. Let's go ahead and gain four life, so we don't get burned out. Now we have four lethal threats. Definitely not worth it to pay 7 to get rid of this. It's just... It's not a good good place to be. Yep, sure. I suppose if they have some way to give this haste, we're dead. I don't think they do, though. I think the the one-mana red spells are Trample and First Strike in this format. I don't think there's a good good way to give this haste. Could be wrong, though. Let's see what they got. Hit me for two. Now unless they have some sort of blue fog. Yeah. Cool. Got there against blue-red. So against drakes. This isn't good enough. It only hurts crackling drake. 
Duress is fine, but the cards that matter are their creatures, so I don't think that's where we want to be exactly. Hmm. Do we want to sideboard at all? I, I think we want a couple Moment of Cravings. Vona took over that game, but Vona's really slow. I think we need to be applying pressure of our own and disrupt them a little. This might be wrong, but we've still got a few pretty resilient threats that they'll have a lot of time killing with their burn spells, and a lot of ways to apply pressure. If this matchup were more common, I would want like an additional couple cast downs or something like that, just more ways to deal with the big drakes who are going to kill us, but... Yeah, I think this is mostly right. I think we want to be able to slow them down a little, but mostly just be attacking ourselves. I don't think we can afford to, like, go full control deck, but we also can't treat them as a full control deck. Midnight Reaper grinds very well, but it sacrifices our life total, and we can't really afford to do that against the Drake Arc Light Phoenix deck. Arc Light Phoenix deck. I'm not taking their time. I'll go ahead and pause the recording until the game starts. Alright. Getting into it. We'll see how this plays out. Opponent had their good aggressive draw next turn, but I think those are the only ones... Or last... Next turn. Last game. But I think those are the only ones we really need to be scared about. Sounds pretty mediocre, but... It won't die to Drakes, at least. Oh, well that is just an excellent draw. Dauntless Bodyguard is a card that I'm really not sure about in this format. Uh, it attacks very poorly into black-green, but black-green isn't literally everything, and being able to apply pressure on turn one is, like, really powerful. Also matches up very poorly against Goblin Chain Whirler, but uh, luckily, at least in the best of three queues, it's not just all Chain Whirler all the time. Okay, fine draw. We're not going to die very quickly, at least, so. Depending on the makeup of opponent's hand, we could be set. Would like to draw, like, a history of Banalia. That would be excellent. Opponent waiting. Maybe they're considering shocking this. Yep, go ahead, get in. It's funny, normally these knights, uh, their hexproof from X ability is like really good. Like Knight of Glory, or Knight of Glory, the... Uh, I can't remember the white one's name, but the white knight is like really good against black green. They don't have anything that can target that thing. Enigma Drake, sure, we knew that was coming. Hmm. So what do we do here? We could play an untapped land, play a knight, and then tap a land and all three knights to tribunal that. I don't love that. I think we're just going to play this tapped, cast this down, and hit them for five. If they play another drake, we can have a much better turn next turn. Playing a knight, tapping a few lands, and uh, tribunaling another drake. I think we need to be applying more pressure than that, and just use our mana efficiently. These don't work that well if you need to tap your creatures pre-combat. It is really fun, because a bunch of our creatures just incidentally have Vigilance. Uh, let's see if they attack here. They did not. Okay. I am fine with that. So I'm going to do what we just talked about. And then this is the summoning sick one, so I will go ahead and pay like that. Get rid of their threat. It's even possible that I'm just supposed to stop attacking with the bodyguard, or maybe even attack with the bodyguard, maybe that's fine. And uh, just trade, save my removal for a bigger threat that we can't deal with, like one of the drakes, but... It appears that opponent is Threat Light, and this is the weakness of the Drake's deck. This card doesn't do anything. Like, it just... it is stone worthless if you don't have one of your creatures going. If 
If we draw any more creatures, we probably won't play them. Okay, opponent has a shock, that's fine. We don't want to play into a fiery cannonade. Uh, that would be a disaster. We just lose. Well, never mind. This card plays around fiery cannonade just fine. So. <laughs> this is, like, the only creature in our deck that doesn't die to cannonade, but it's the one we drew, so. One's gonna need something real good to not die here. And even if they can avoid dying, they probably won't shut down the pressure completely, and they definitely won't be applying pressure to us. So. Radical idea, sure. One of the most important things in magic is tempo, like spending your mana efficiently every turn. And opponent has used all their mana basically every turn, but let's see if we can count how much mana they've spent that hasn't affected the board. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight. Compared to how much mana have we spent that didn't affect the board? Like, none? And we've spent almost all our mana? Oh, there is a haste card for one. Huh, I hadn't thought about that. It doesn't cantrip, so I can see why people don't usually play it, but... Yeah, uh... What I was just saying there. Opponents spent a lot of mana that did not affect this board, and that's a weakness of a deck with a lot of cantrips. Well, that went well. Let's get back into it with the next... Alright, second match. We're so close to getting back to silver. What you guys don't see is all of the bad decks that I play off-camera to try and learn stuff about the format, and oh boy do those hurt my rating. Uh... <sighs> This hand might be too bad, but both of our cards are very good and our mana works, so I'm gonna keep it. We we are reasonably likely to flood out and die horribly, but... We also might be playing against black-green, and these are our two best cards. And it's much better than a hand with, like, three lands and three knight of the whatever the black one is. Instead we're against red, our knight of grace is probably going to get shocked. I always want to call every Black-White Knight cycle Knight of Glory and Knight of Infamy because I hadn't been playing that long when uh, Magic 2013 came out and so those were like the first paired knights that were released while I was playing. That's a good draw. Go ahead and name Knight. I, th I was wondering, do we have two centaurs? But no. And put two counters on this. Would really love to draw, like, well, we need another white land before Najani is good, but that type of thing. Or maybe, like, a Midnight Reaper. Thief of Sanity, that's scary. Well, uh, let's hope they don't find anything good on top of our deck, because, oh boy. I mentioned that we might just flood out and die, and we have drawn two lands and one non-land. So we are flooding out and are ready to die. That said, we've got a lot of pressure on board. Opponent is using their life total very liberally. This might be the type of game where Thief of Sanity isn't even that good, because we're not competing against how many cards our opponent has in hand. We're just trying to apply enough pressure that they can't stop us before they're dead. Okay, they've been Conclave Tribunal. Which I, I guess we're happy with not having. Yeah, <laughs> opponent wasn't aware of how much trouble we were in, so them spending their mana to look at our hand and be down a card is great. Okay. Ooh, that's really good against our Knight of Autumn. Not good against this cast down that was on top of our deck, though. Thief of Sanity is the better creature overall, but like I said, putting them to four here is just great. Uh, now they have to answer both of these, or they're just going to get beaten up. We might be stealing this one, despite having flooded out pretty badly. Okay. The Ravager comes down, that is fine. Uh, this turn isn't going to go well for our opponent, even with that. Combat. Head. Get in with both. They need to chump one and trade with another. They probably trade here, so it doesn't... Uh, nah, I'm not sure. See what they do. I think I want to play out this Knight of Autumn, 
it plays into Ritual of Soot pretty badly, especially if they trade against the Cavalier, which sucks, but I think we need to keep putting lethal threats on the board. Okay. This both indicates that they do not have Ritual of Soot, and also lets us play around Ritual of Soot, so that's just excellent. Ray for Conclave, Cavalier. This card is sick. Ah, okay. Well, you don't choose until resolution, right? Oh no, you choose when you put it on the stack. Sad. Okay, let's see what opponent's got. We're starting to run out of cards. We have a lethal threat on board that doesn't die to normal removal. That ain't it. Okay, so opponent is the dragon's deck, I guess? Main deck Thief of Sanity and a deck with enough dragons for Sarkon is weird. Alright, Conclave Tribunal. Come on. Right on top? No. Okay. Well, that's fine. Still gonna force them to trade here, just wanna get this off the table. And it still leaves us with lethal on board. I'm gonna go ahead and end. Holding a land, just because opponent uh, has Thought Erasure in their deck, and so there's a chance that they play another one if we've got one of these going on. Okay, I wondered why they ditched a Karn. It makes more sense if they have another Karn. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna give you a Steam Vents. They must have a Shock or something? No, they're just dead. Wow. I'm really surprised they didn't downtick there. A token could have chump blocked and would have given them a lot more looks at cards. Okay. It looks like Midnight Reaper and a Johnny will be excellent, as will Duress. Maybe not all the Duresses. Not quite as good as usual against opponent's deck. Against what they are doing, Vona, pretty bad. Knight of Autumn, not great. Yeah, probably just trim all the knights. This card, uh, sometimes, like on turn two, they play a search for Ascanta, and then you blow it up and you feel like a genius, but most of the time it's just a 4-3 for three, whereas all the rest of our cards are basically better than that. Opponent showed a lot of Planeswalkers and a lot of creatures, so we're going to leave in our Conclave Tribunals. Maybe shouldn't have Cast Down? I do like it to answer Thief of Sanity, though. Yeah, I'll go ahead and hang on to that. Uh, if it looks like our opponent's deck has a lot of legendary creatures, we can reevaluate for the next turn, or next game, possibly cut the Cast Downs. Maybe bring Knight of Autumn back in. All right, let's keep a hand with fewer lands in it this time. The fact that we won that game was a bit of a miracle. Uh, this hand's not incredible, but it's not bad. Like, this land helps us cast any knights, and we still have three plays without drawing any land at all. So, yeah, I think this is worth keeping. Notably, this hand is quite bad against Bolas, and that was like the worst draw on our deck. So, <laughs> hand is not perfect. One thing I might consider... Okay, they're just getting that down. That is fine by me. Okay, well that's another thing we can play with our hand, so that's cool. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, what I might end up doing is just swap out the cast downs for Moment of Craving, because it still kills Thief of Sanity, but... Uh, Moment lets, for instance, our first strike knights attack into Bolas safely. Opponent taking a lot of damage. Let's see what they have here. Cannonade, not great against our board. That's also not incredible. Sure, take whatever you want. Opponent kind of representing shock, but not really, because uh, they needed the black for Thought Erasure, and so I suspect they just drew their black land. The fact that they binned a good removal spell... Huh, taking our Duress. Maybe they have a Ritual of Soot that they're trying to save? And it's still good against that, so, like, whatever. Go to my turn. Hmm. I'm gonna go to combat. And what I'm actually going to do... Let's see if they have anything here. I'm actually going to play the Dauntless Bodyguard, because like I said, taking Duress is a weird decision with what we have, and so I suspect they do have a Sweeper of some sort. 
So we can play Dauntless Bodyguard and protect this one and keep two creatures through Sweeper instead of just saving a Danto. Yeah! Ha! Huh. That, that makes me suspect pretty heavily that I was right. Oh, it chose for us. I was like, what? Why didn't I get to pick? But that makes more sense. Opponent possibly going up to five here. They're still a ways off from flipping this. Their life total is getting pretty low, and we've still got a bunch of threats in hand, so... We need to draw some lands eventually, but, I don't know, any white land turns on one of our best cards. Sure, that is not a great card here. Black land. Nope, oh well. Let's see if they want to block, if they do, whatever. If I'd drawn a black land, I would have casted this down, but... Alas, twas not the case, and that's fine. The question is... Okay, they're taking it, going a little low. Which knight do we play? This one's resilient against their removal, but this one will have more power. I guess we can play this to buff this one next turn. Oh, an opponent has a black permanent anyway. What am I talking about? Sure, resolves. They still can't flip this, because it'll only go up to six, even if they bin the card. They did not. Sulfur Falls. They can't cast Ritual of Soot here. Attacking me. Okay, that's super aggressive, but maybe they're really desperate, th hoping we have something that they can take. Ideal situation, they get like a Knight of Malice and we draw a Black Land <laughs> to cast down. And just get to finish them. Opponent taking their time, that either means there's three good cards or three bad cards. Wait. Oh, uh, those... Whatever they took must have been pretty good. I guess they can't take Conclave Cavalier, at least not if they plan to cast it this turn. Okay. We drew a land. That... Man, that is the only land in our deck that doesn't do anything. That... That sucks. I guess other unclaimed territories don't do anything either, but... Oh, man. That is rough. Shock, sure. Uh, nothing we can do about that. Still need another removal spell or they're dead. We have one mystery card in exile. Uh, that was their cast down, not ours. Uh, sure. Damage. Putting them to one. Now they're at one and we have two lethal threats on board. That said, they're going to flip their Ascanta, they have one of our cards in the uh, in exile, and they might be able to get another one. Our mana has not cooperated. Which is unfortunate, because like we've got a pretty good amount of sources. Maybe need to have more generic white. I thought we had enough, but I'll have to double check after this game. Okay, sure. Uh, that doesn't... Wait, they have a Knight of Malice? Oh, wow. Okay. Sure. Can't really attack unless they have a one mana removal spell. That's fine. Uh, this is actually cool here. Because that will dig us into more cards if they trade off. I think that's their only real block. Knight of Malice on our knight, chump here. I guess they could uh, lose both without trading for us. That would deny us drawing cards, but that gives up a lot of board presence. And I'm going to opt not to draw a card. Instead, just keep my good attacking creature on board. Yeah. Oh, man. We don't have a land. Oh, well. Still, again, multiple lethal threats on board. Uh, we're up cards. Opponent is on the ropes. Uh, what was our card that they cast? Was that our Knight of Malice and for some reason it's in their graveyard? I'm real confused. <laughs> I'm not sure what opponent's... Because we don't have a card in Exile anymore. So, like, it has to have been... 
And, like, it's weird that they had Knight of Malice in their deck, but I think... <laughs> I think our Knight of Malice went to the opponent's graveyard, which is not how that's supposed to work. Yeah, uh, if we lose this game to that bug, that's gonna be irritating. Uh, I wish this were... I wish we had chat like Magic Online so I could say, Hey, opponent, did you... Do you have our card for some reason? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, keep attacking. Danto Vanguard showing by this card is fantastic. We have activated it a bunch of times. And it's just ripping through what the opponent has to do. Huh. Playing this plays into another Ritual of Soot. And they just hit their Black Lamp. I'm gonna... Oh wait, no it doesn't, because our... Uh, our Dauntless Bodyguard can sacrifice to keep a Danto Vanguard alive. Yeah. Yep. Desperation as Kenta. It's basically no card they could have here, because Dauntless can save a Danto. Sure. Look at my hand. Look at all these glorious cards that I cannot cast. So yeah, this was a bit of a wild one, having to chew through our own Knight of Malice like three times, <laughs> but yeah. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe they played something else of ours that I didn't notice. Anyway, we're 2-0. Let's go ahead and get into the third one. Alright, third and final match. This deck has been at least exciting to play. The uh, more resilient cards make it so you don't have as many bad, flood-out, feel-bad moments. This hand looks great. Just really, really good. Oh, I forgot to check our mana. Oh well. Uh, this game, our mana is flawless. We only have one black card that isn't a knight in our deck, so we can cast basically everything right now. Let's go ahead and name knight. Ayah. One was showing a Demir Guildgate, so the... Uh, the hexproof from black likely to actually matter. Midnight Reaper allows us to play around Ritual of Soot, which is pretty cool. What I think we're going to do though is I'm just going to attack and then Knight of Autumn to try to blow up this search for Ascanta. Eh, it's not gonna flip yet, so maybe we can wait on that. Yeah, let's go ahead and play this guy. Yeah. He resolved, which is a little surprising. They might kill this uh, pre-combat so I don't get to hit them for three. Or at least before I hit them. Which is fine by me, that puts us up a card. Cast down, sure. This card is really good. Like. When they previewed it, I saw a lot of people saying, Oh, it's just Grim Harvest Specs without Morph. Why would you play this? Uh, because it counts itself. That's why. <laughs> like, Grim Harvest Specs, if they killed the Harvest Specs, it just didn't do anything. Let's go ahead and pay two life. I'm going to Knight of Autumn first. This plays around, uh... This plays around Syncopate. Blow up their search, which cuts off their card advantage, hopefully, and then I can also stick a Dauntless Bodyguard, so we've still got a lot of pressure on board. Conclave Tribunals, not looking incredible here, but I imagine they'll do something eventually. Okay. Wow, that's really good against this play. Oops. Okay. Well, now I'm glad we have Conclave Tribunals, because opponent is almost out of cards. Been to land. Hopefully, just found another land. So, can go ahead and play this named Knight. White mana. Uh, unclaimed territory is still somewhat tedious to play with on. Uh... Oh, we can actually play boat, play out all of our cards. That's kind of cool. Hopefully they do not have a sweeper. We can't can't really play around a sweeper. Like if we have one extra knight in hand, it's pretty whatever. Yeah, now we've got good power on board. Opponents are running low on cards. 
They don't even have double black for a Ritual of Soot. Eldest Reborn is fine. Uh, not incredible for us, because uh, that's going to be unfortunate eventually, but... Okay, they missed on lands. Hmm. If we Conclave Tribunal this, we don't have to discard a card, which I think that's okay. We've already got quite a lot of power in play. So I think we are fine with uh, with not committing more to the board this turn. Just because if we play the Conclave Cavalier, we pitch a Tribunal, which isn't awful, but then we don't have a way to deal with the Eldest Reborn before they get to reanimate something, and like, I don't know, just even them getting our Knight of Autumn uh, would be terrible, because then they get to do this. They get to blow this up, get Ral back, wipe our board. I think we're going to be okay this game. Opponent's real low, they're short on mana this turn. And we have another good resilient threat. Combat. Let's go ahead and get in there. Looks like they've got removal. No, they just have a blocker. That's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and play this out. It doesn't play into any of the, the sweepers that opponent might have. Sure, they have a counter, whatever. One's got three cards, they need two answers. And even if they have answers, like, they've already shown us Notion Rain, those are just blank. Like, opponent can't play Shocklands untapped anymore. Yeah. We applied enough pressure that we were just really ahead there. Okay, it looks like another matchup where Adanto Vanguard's gonna be fantastic. Let's get our Midnight Reapers. Probably want the full four duress this time. Opponent looked to be much more of a hard control deck. Knight of Autumn was okay there, but... It's not going to be great overall. Uh, Knight of Malice, pretty mopey. I don't want to mess up our curve too badly, though, so we're not going to cut all the two drops. And Dauntless Bodyguard's pretty whatever. We've got other one drops we're okay with playing. All right, let's check our sources. Am I dumb? Four, eight. Oh, we only have 11 white that isn't unclaimed territory. That is not enough for History of Banalia. <laughs> that is significantly too low. Oops. Um, uh, we have plenty of black, though, right? Yeah, 12 black, that's enough for cast down and duress and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, huh. Maybe need to rethink this deck a little, because this is, like, one of the best cards in the deck, and, along with a Johnny, and we don't really have enough white to be casting it super consistently. Hmm. It's possible the deck needs to be playing, like, Flower, the Flower Flourish uh, split card. Hmm. That's not terrible. Late game pump that also does stuff early. This hand is really good. Gonna rip up their hand. Oh, I should have cut these. This doesn't do anything. Yeah, this was really bad, not cutting that. I didn't even think about it. Let's go ahead and get a thread on board. Not doing anything with our turn next turn anyway, so no reason to not be attacking while we rip up their hand. Tap land, okay. It's another good draw if we ever draw a third land. Any third land lets us cast it though, so that's pretty sweet. And even if we miss for a while, duressing while beating them up is fine. Uh, do we care about these thought erasures? We pretty much don't care about disdainful stroke, so I think I'm gonna take one of these. If we like draw a four drop, we can just duress the disdainful stroke instead. Hopefully we draw a land and we can just start sticking Midnight Reapers. If we get two of these down, it seems really hard to lose. Opponent takes our best card that we can never ever cast, that's fine. Well, that was an awful draw. Oh boy. We've got 23 lands, which is like kind of above average for an aggro deck, but our curve also goes higher. Let's go ahead and get rid of that sweeper. Alright, opponent's on, like, zero gas. We're on not enough lands to cast our gas. Okay, that was a really good draw for them. I might have taken that instead of, uh, instead of Fiery Cannonade eventually. Just because this is such inevitability. Well, that was a great draw. Let's start getting our Reapers down. Now, even if they have a Cannonade, we just 
pick up cards for everyone we lost. Let's see, they were only at three, so there's still a while from flipping this at least. Okay. I'm not gassing back up, but they are, their life total is going to get low. If we draw... Well, we're still a couple sources off casting this Conclave Cavalier, which is unfortunate, but... What do you got, opponent? Huh. Maybe they were just reading our cards? It looked like they were preparing to target something. Huh. Is it worth hitting this? How many cards do they have in the graveyard? Six? I think I'd rather just stick another Reaper. Yeah, just gonna go ahead and stick this. Uh, notably, we do have cards that get hit by Disdainful Stroke now, so we might get punished for earlier decision. They don't bin. That card must be great. Okay, well. I mean, this gets rid of our pressure, but at what cost, opponent? <laughs> Oh, we should have cut this too. Man, this sideboarding was really sloppy. Okay, can we hit a land ever, please? Oh god, please hit a land. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Holy crap! We just drew seven cards without hitting a land. Oh my god, that is so awful. That is unbelievably bad. I thought we were gonna tribunal this and just win the game very easily, but... Jeez. Oh my god, now they have a bolos that we, like, can't really answer? Oh my gosh. I thought this game was in the bag and we just... Oh, we got destroyed by those draws. That... And almost every card we drew costs four or more. Oh my gosh, that might be the worst draw seven in the history of Magic the Gathering. Yep, yep, Ravager. That's fine. Let's get rid of uh, one of these Conclave Cavaliers. We're not particularly close to casting them. Oh my gosh! Holy crap! Like, there are no words for how unlucky we just got. Jeez. Three lands in the top 20 cards? Ugh. Yep, another Ravager. We're probably just going to run this back. Oh, why did I pitch Conclave Cavalier? Holy crap. I'm letting this tilt me when I shouldn't be. Uh, we're going to go ahead, pay two life. Tribunal. Get the Bolas. I think we're still even going to be fine because it's really hard to keep up with an aggro deck that drew six extra cards, but oh my. Yeah, opponent concedes. So, despite some absolute nonsense there, we ended up 3-0, uh, which I haven't done on the channel in quite a while, but hey, sometimes you get unlucky and sometimes we get pretty lucky as we did there. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to see me desperately attempt to 3-0 some more times later, I would love it if you could subscribe to this channel. I post a couple deck techs and or I post a couple full videos like this every week, along with a deck tech and some other uh, Let's Play content. So yeah, it would be great if you could subscribe to this and see more of our stuff. That's all for today. Thanks. Bye.